My guest today is Sasha Stone. It was an honor to get the chance to sit down and speak to Sasha. Uh, Sasha's currently in America, uh, traveling America with his Arise Freedom Tour. Um, Sasha, I heard his name probably around about three years ago and um, a few sort of YouTube channels that I tune in for, for information to find out what's going on in the world and other personal interests that I have. I always heard Sasha Stone's name and um, probably about eight months ago, I, I eventually seen uh, some of uh, Sasha Stone's videos and um, I started to tune in. Um, and after hearing Sasha speak uh, and, and seeing a, a lot of his videos, I then found that Sasha started to make sense um, on the things that I, I sort of believe or feel that within myself that I've been dealing with over the last, say, 25 years. And not only that, it brings into light all the current events that we're all faced and everything that we've been faced over the last 12 months. Um, and, and also to everything that's been happening over the last thousand years. I mean, uh, what Sasha says and, uh, he really brings all of this into light and gives a, a, an overall, uh, picture on what this all means, you know, what this all means in this 3d reality. And, um, and stuff like that. So, so definitely a fascinating guy. And, um, you know, from, from what I found through, through my life in, in having an interest to all of these things, um, on a spiritual sense and, um, my sort of my journey now that I'm faced with, you know, accepting change <clears throat> because of everything, uh, that we're going through and navigating through within this, uh, within this life, you know, I, I believe that we're all, sort of faced with a choice to make, um, to get through these difficult times. Um, and I believe that the right choice is everything that's going to nurture the planet a lot more to heal because us as human beings have been giving this uh, planet, this mother earth, a rather hard beating, uh, in the way that we sort of live. And, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, to, to get through this and to have a, a, a good, peaceful um future for for the species and humanity i think the change is is uh, ideal for everybody uh to start to get a little bit more sustainable so um so yeah so if anybody wants to go and look up sasha uh you can find him at sashastone.com um if you go to his webpage here which you can all see uh, there's plenty of videos there one with david ike and sean stone I've uh, been a fan of Sean Stone now myself uh, for probably about 10 years. And um, yeah, Sean, Sean Stone is is uh, a good guy to follow. Um, but yeah, you can find Sasha's work here. And then also to go and look up Lazarus Initiative on BitChute uh, for some videos there that would not be censored for this uh, crazy censorship that we're going through via YouTube. So I hope you guys enjoy. Well, I, I didn't get any question in that, but that's all right. I kind of, I think, get the gist of, of the flow. Um, so I'll answer it in, in the now. Um, as you mentioned, Sean Stone's name, um, he was pinging through to me on, on a message which came up on my screen, literally at the moment you mentioned his name, maybe three seconds, boom, up it comes. So that's a classic uh, example in the now of so-called quantum entanglement. Which is how the um, which is how the fabric of reality um, speaks to itself, reflects itself, and reveals itself uh, to us. You mention um, a number of um, sort of epochal subjects like um, the superhadron collider, uh, CERN, and um, the long count Sulcan of the Mayans with their calendric systems and the uh, Sumerian um, uh, cuneiform tablets which teach us about the Anunnaki and, and their sort of 3,600 year elliptical orbit around our sun. Um, so all of these things are very, very interconnected. The uh, so-called Anunnaki, the 
uh, end of the Long Count Sulka in the 2012 crossover that occurred, um, and um, and Sean Stone um, picking up on the fact that um, there was an entanglement happening thousands of miles away from him, uh, where two souls were come together and were communicating and uh, reflecting on on him and that speaks to him through the quantum and instantly he rem reminds himself to quickly send me a, a one-liner message so that's a classic example of how we're moving into a kind of um let's say a collapse of uh, of of our reality framework everything right now is in a sort of dystopian uh, um, tailspin and that's connected to CERN and what they've been endeavoring to do by uh, chasing the so-called God particle which is a bullshit satanic exercise at best uh, and a bullshit satanic exercise at worst uh, but the fun bit is that the superhadron collider CERN is the biggest scientific fuck up in the history of our world uh, paid for by the tax dollars of idiot human beings all around the world who continue to pay coin to caesar um, while caesar destroys them and lurches toward their babies now with lethal uh, injections masquerading as vaccines so you see everything is interconnected to everything else um, I'm happy to, to riff on any of the subjects, but I don't know that it's important to do that. I think what is important is that each of us, and this is where I get to the, the nub of what I believe your uh, general flow uh, was aiming at, um, is that the compression of evil, of wickedness, of dysfunction that we're all facing in our lives at this time is where the great benediction the great the grace of god so to speak exists in this dystopia so on the one hand it hurts like hell because if you're a moron an unrealized human being who is just led by appetite and lives in a kind of fight or flight mode uh, just feeding appetites and stealing as much as they can from their neighbors and not following their conscience in life and god knows uh, most human beings it would appear are that way inclined are part of the problem so to speak the fact of the matter is that to those who are not chasing appetites to those who are genuinely concerned about the survival of species yep. to those who are genuinely um, keyed into their humanity mm -hmm. and who understand the, the central tenets of being a good human is to conduct right action and to stand in pure truth and to hell with the consequences but we will never move against our conscience we will never do anything that causes us to move against conscience that tribe of human which is the new earther that tribe of humankind is now being refined like mm -hmm. the diamond in the coal and it is that tribe of humanity whether it ends up being 20,000 people or 200,000 or 2 billion is almost immaterial i suggest it's going to be closer to 2 billion but the point is that is it not true and i ask you this question do you not feel that in the last year and a half of this ritual satanic humiliation exercise that's been thrust upon us by this satanic construct called government do you not feel that you've become a better human in the last year? Because I bet the answer is yes. Well, um, I, I, I will agree with you and, and say yes. Um, but but personally, um, in, in a better human, like, you know, uh, personally, I've been getting all like anxiety from it all because I feel the attack and I feel the way it's going. And I see all these people that are sort of manipulated by the direction of it. And I say to myself, that's a trap, you know. Um, if I sort of go back maybe two years 
it'll it'll explain you know give you a better in-depth answer to to this as well but i took a trip in the philippines in 2019 and for the first time with my own eyes I just saw the planet for what it was. And I just seen that, you know, the, the impact that man has made to the envir environment, right? So I seen the, how the, the Philippine islands were damaged from the tourism industry. So when I came back from the Philippines in mid 2019, I'm like, holy shit, you know, human beings are like really messing this planet up, you know, like where we're a species that puts all of our waste and bury our waste in the planet, you know, and I just was like, you know, I need to make change and I need to do all these things. And, you know, next minute where we're struck with the 2019, 2020 wildfires in Australia and, you know, we get everybody rallying together saying we want change, we want change, you know, climate change is real. And the next minute you see this COVID uh, outbreak and the next minute you see the only answer out of this is the vaccine. So I've tied all this together and I've gone, you know, is the big, big V the elite's answer to climate change for a sustainable uh, future. And those who are willing to accept that to get their life back, or those who aren't willing to accept change, you know, go off grid, you know, like provide for yourself, have a sustainable future, you know? So we're at this path of people are either going to take that direction and be plugged in to the system and go that satanic route, this dystopian route, or for the better of the planet, humanity, the species to what you're saying, make that change, you know, become a bit more sustainable, go into this new sort of shift, this new earth to say, and 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 to really make change for the survival of the human race if if that kind of makes sense so yeah so that that's where i sit because i for the last 12 months i've been making plans myself to to get off grid you know like i i'm like i don't want to be a part of this circus because i see where it's going yeah, I see. That, forgive me for jumping in but just that is enough just just that just the fact that hundreds of millions of human beings are seeing through the the fallacy of government mm. and seeing through the deceptions of media and academia and are seeing that these um, deviant public uh, officials and administrators are highly toxic and um, there's bad shadow actors in some sort of Luciferian novel, science fiction novel, when you look at the Fauci's of this world, mm. where the hell did creatures uh, slither under? Where did they emerge from? And exactly. we're being forced to look back and see that actually mm -hmm. we and our tax dollars have been complicit with the emergence of these bad actors, these terrible icons. We've been cultivating them. We were the enablers. Those of us who were good humans shuffling around, minding our own business, trying not to get into trouble, and yet paying into the system, paying mm -hmm. coin to see and registering our babies at birth and registering our farmlands and all the rest of it and buying shit products on supermarket shelves that were poisoning us without raising our voices in dissent, mm -hmm. uh, much less in horror. You know, or every step of the way, it is that 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 concentration of, of idiocy, of our ignorance that was complicit and that allowed for the emergence. So we're the enablers, our decency, common human decency is the enabler of these satanic icons like uh, anthony fauci and it's wonderful that we can now see that yeah. and recognize that it's not enough to be a good human mm. because to be conscious is fine but it means nothing you're still harvest mm. you have to have consciousness in action if it's to mean anything yeah well look I, i'm i'm over here in australia and i i see everything that's going on in america like i seen the the lies that they were all twisting with trump and you know one one scary thing is um the media were making trump out to be say say like say um you know the equivalent of hitler you know and white supremacist and he's a racist and all these things and like almost to say that they were painting this this picture to set a stage for like this possible sort of war scenario or this scenario to go in and and attack america because of trump and so on but my point to that is is i seen the the manipulation in the media but then on the other side now i see all this stuff that's being exposed about fauci and nobody's really covering it and especially over here you know like if Australian media was to air all the recent emails that's come out about Fauci and all the lies and stuff that's being exposed, like it literally means that we've just all been lied to for the last, you know, over 12 months. And it's like, no, no, 
no, over 2,000 years. So let's be clear about it. You mentioned you mentioned the Sumerians. So let's go there. That's four and a half thousand years ago. Uh, the Sumeria was governed uh, by by um, pr pr priestess administrators known as the Kunte, which is where the term Kunt comes from. Just so you understand how we managed to flip a word which is a powerful and beautiful thing, which is the administrator priestesses of the Sumerian era, the Kunte. And that they've, they've been subverted and defiled into being some dirty word in the modern lexicon. But that's just a classic example of the inverted dream spell that has cocked us all up mentally, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, civilizationally, and so on. Um, but it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's all good, but it's four and a half thousand years mm -hmm. of that pathology of being lied to. Just so you know, it's not just 12 months. Uh, 12 months is the compression point. Yes, that was the compression point at the end of days where that absolute toxicity of the grand deceptions of our civilizational wheel have moved into a compression point. That's true. But actually, we've been deceived at the most grandiose uh, level, epochal level for four and a half thousand years, at least. It may have gone on for as long as 200 million years if you're to take into account the real archaeo uh, cosmology and a lot of the real stories, but we should consider concern ourselves with the written record, which is the Sumerian cuneiform, which is about four and a half thousand years old. We don't have anything to go prior to that other than a few uh, petroglyphs and things like that, and yeah. a lot of speculation. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you when you were saying though about um, about Fauci, I mean, so where where did these people come from these out of this circle because i mean it you know it appears that um uh whenever that you know like with the hiv virus and stuff like that you know fauci popped his head up and then now all of a sudden fauci popped his head up again you know but like to yeah. me are these people like say like second generation soviet second generation nazis like where, who where, where do they slither from like are these well, please understand that. Please understand that the Soviets um, are, are never the problem, and communist China is not the problem. Uh, communist China and uh, communist Russia uh, were the product of Wall Street and the Bank of England and the Vatican, okay, right. and the crowns of Europe. So be clear: we engineered that. We went in, fomented the Bolshevik Revolution through Wall Street. We financed the Trotskys and the uh, and the Lenins. Uh, of this world and the Karl Marxes of this world. Okay, we financed them and we threw uh, by step uh, to disrupt the Romanov dynasty. And that's one of the gravest travesties in our history, which will need to be redressed in the fullest of time, in much the same way that the sacrifice of black skin, brown skin, red skin, and yellow skin people 500 years ago through the imperial hegemony of the crowns of Europe under the papal uh, canon went forth and, 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 and murdered most of the First Nation peoples of the world. So there are grave crimes, uh, old crimes that need to be redressed. And I call this the song of uh, the ancestors that's in our blood. It doesn't go away. And we have to redeem ourselves uh, from those uh, terrible chapters in our, in our history. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, um, yeah, well, it's all out there and it's all being, you know, becoming exposed now and, and stuff. So, so basically to sort of move on from that to say what's, uh, so, so where do you see sort of this all playing out to be in the coming years? And, um, you know, I mean, is this, is this end outcome sort of like a doom and gloom scenario is, is the big, you know, vax agenda a part of this sort of, human cull for a sustainable future you know to, to battle clutch. yeah of course it is of course it is of course it's all part of a dying fantasy of cronus the, the lords of time themselves are dying um i knew jose arguelas the great uh, um, uh, mystic um the last of the um, mayan high priests the man who actually decoded the long count sulcan and put 2012 on the map so I knew Jose Aguilas, and uh, just to come back to something you said earlier, where did these uh, Anthony Fauci's of this world emerge from? Well, uh, Jose Aguilas, before he died, uh, came and spent a month with me at my home in Bali, and he told me categorically that these characters uh, come from Mars. He said they are reincarnated souls whose actual home planet is Mars or was Mars, and he cited Barack Obama as one of them. I understand that... Um, um, 
um, what's his name? Elon Musk. I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's speaking rather boldly about wanting to die on Mars. Well, That's possibly crazy. he could do that. Yeah. Possibly he should do that. And possibly he speaks on behalf of a great many other deviant souls. I don't know how deviant his soul is, but I find his uh, desire to, um, you know, to, to reach Mars, uh, frankly, perverse when you can look at the, any number of countries in South West Af in, in South, uh, Southeast Asia or Africa, Central and South America, and see that we can't feed a third of the planet. I think mm. it's perverse and extreme uh, that people like Branson and Musk are chasing the stars. I think it's disgusting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, it just blows my mind, you know, down here that they're jumping up and down about climate change and all this stuff. And the next minute they're taking these spaceship trips up to space as if it doesn't exist. And you're just like, what this whole thing's like a, you know, just this big circus. And it's, they're trying it's to normalize it. They're trying to normalize space flight possibly because before the big, uh, extinction event that's upcoming, the micronova eruption or explosion of our sun in the year 2046, which we know is coming. Uh, I think prior to that uh, dateline, they're looking to normalize space flight amongst their own um, Illuminati class so mm -hmm. that they can all back off back to Mars or uh, Alpha Draconis or wherever they come from. It doesn't really matter. I mean, the point is this, is that the good human is alive and well. The good human I refer to as the Adamite is re-emerging now. Our regenesis is underway and our true Christ of nature is emerging, re-emerging through us in a way that's never happened before in the history of this world. To those of us who can see it and to those of us who can feel that Christ of supernature rising within our blood, believe me, we are becoming like gods uh, uh, amongst men. Believe me when I say we're becoming like gods mm. amongst men. I had yeah. another a slightly prophetic vision in a fever yesterday and i saw this crystal clear again and i had to really sit back and look at what what am i seeing in the inner scape and i was seeing <clears throat> that christic supernature emerging amongst the body of the adamites in this world and i know it's coming and I believe that these uh, other creepy crawlies are looking to uh, normalize space flight so that they can all bugger off to their home planet before the Micronova event happens. Because when that Micronova event does happen, uh, we have to have created a Tesla shield, so to speak, around the, the surface of the Earth uh, as a plasma protection against what that Micronova eruption would otherwise do, which would eviscerate us unless we are ready and prepared to receive that volume and quanta of vibral light that will hit us in that eruption at that time. If we are prepared to receive that quanta and that volume of uh, vibral light, the entire plane of our existence will move into its so-called enlightenment in a flash. We'll move into a vertical ascension on that dateline. Now, moving between now and then, either way, we are part of an incremental um, uh, flow toward that. So we're going to hit certain bumps in the road. You, you, you mentioned briefly, or you alluded very briefly to, let's say, Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030. Um, so let's look at that for a moment. Um, Agenda 21. Well, they certainly fucked that one up. They, they ran years behind their own business model, so they had to bump it to 2030. Well, that's good news, okay? Because Agenda 21 did not work out uh, as per the plan. Al Gore and his fetid little PowerPoint presentation, uh, coupled uh, with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and a bunch of other twats in Hollywood who also supported that great climate change myth, well, that didn't quite sell itself to middle America or middle Germany or middle Botswana. We weren't buying it. Actually, you're looking at a planetary biosphere right now that's actually thriving, absolutely thriving. So that's the fact of the matter. Yes, there is a change, climate change. There's also penis change. There's also hair follicle change. There's also eye color change. There's also changing of shoes, changing of guards. For Christ's sake, we live in a changing universe. Mm. So how did change all of a sudden become the great threat? Well, only to very stupid people who are cult programmed can they be afraid of change. Mm. Change is written into everything. 
and we simply have to own that. But unfortunately, um, the great Yaldabaoth, um, the Luciferian egregore that has captivated the minds of this planet uh, through uh, the dystopia of media and academia, the dream spell machine and so on, um, has thrown us into this tailspin where, where we believe that change is a threat. It's not. You're supposed to surf change. You're supposed to evolve with it. So when the projected plasma or life force of humankind is what steers the planet. Be mm. clear about that. It is the projected psycho-emotional flux of humankind that <clears throat> manifests in weather patterns. Mm -hmm. Be clear about that as well. The human being is the most advanced technology that emerges out of Tara, out of this earth. It is mm. the collective plasma projection or ideation of humanity that determines the outcome. Now, these Babylonian sons of bitches know that, and they've known it for a long time. So what they do is they dream spell humanity in order to harvest our life force and then install their own software programs to predetermine or predictively program our behavior so that they can then determine where we project our attention or our plasma and thereby manifest wrong outcomes. So understand that once we remove the parasite from our back as a collective, we start to take this earth plane and this cosmos by extension into its supernature. We start to anchor patterns of perfection and literally every idea we have, which is a high frequency idea, will manifest almost instantaneously because that's written into the universal law. But first we have to remove the parasite, the third party intervention. That uh, to me makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you say parasite, what would that parasite be? But then also too, when you say that, you know, as if to say they project it, is this like through sort of media, through movies, through stuff like that, that they sort of project that? Uh, in it's that all Above. It's all of the above. Uh, in, in the most rudimentary sense, the parasite can be described as the absence of relationship with self. Mm -hmm. And you can take it further and say that the parasite is the shadow that emerges through the um, uh, broken relationship that we have with self. So mm -hmm. when I'm not full and complete within myself then mm. a shadow will emerge that, yeah. that shadow then feeds off my life force mm. so actually it's an extension of me but because i'm a stupid human i'm going to blame someone else for it i'll always mm. blame someone else for my bad mood or for my whatever whatever befalls me because mm. stupid people do that so that's the problem we've got and then you've got government and then you've got churches priest bankers the high street and academia and every then you you can then look at everything else as being a parasite doctors parasite of human beings uh, by keeping us sick by mm -hmm. prescribing um pharmaceutical uh, yep. chemical poisons to us and keeping us sick so the doctor is the parasite there masquerading as being the healer and is, of it, course the banker the banker is the parasite um, mm -hmm. And so is the accountant. And so is the lawyer. Lawyers are the worst parasites of all. And I work with mm -hmm. a great many brilliant ones. But it is it's a parasitic uh, profession. It simply scours the world looking for suffrage. And where it finds it, it seeks to exploit that suffrage for coin. We'll do the math. So we, we've created an artificial civilization made up of priest bankers, lawyers, accountants, um, and doctors, and so on. Uh, uh, teachers, policemen, you know, soldiers, and of course, the worst of all, politicians, yeah. technocrats, bureaucrats, mm -hmm. all of these are parasites. So understand that the parasite exists where the absence of relationship with self should otherwise exist. So where does the controller of that, where do they sit? Do they sit on this sort of three-dimensional realm? Is this outer force energy? Is there something tapping into sort of that, 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 that sort of, sort of creates this reality that we seem to fall into? If, if that makes sense of what I'm trying to say, like who, who is literally the controller of, of that to sort of project that? 
um, to, well, to the, 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 I understand the question, obviously. The, the un, look, the unresolved aspect of you is ultimately the controller, but it's a split, it's a split answer. So it is the unresolved aspect of us at the collective level yep. that causes us to look outwardly for salvation. Mm -hmm. And because we are looking outwardly for salvation or redemption, we've already indentured ourselves to false light by mm -hmm. looking externally and not internally yep. for the answer, for yep. the redemption. And because we're looking externally, we've basically sent out a beacon into the cosmos going, hey, I'm a victim. I'm an unevolved spirit in this plane of existence, and I'm looking for redemption. I'm looking for salvation. Save mm -hmm. me. And so the next passing ship could be a good one. It could be a bad one. Let's refer to it as an egregore, which is a collective uh, spirit form, energy form. Mm. And that creature could come from Alpha uh, Centaurus, which is a highly evolved uh, star system, uh, or Alpha Draconis, a highly evolved but highly malevolent uh, star system. It could be a Zeta Reticulin. It could be a Draconis. You know, th there's any number. Of, 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 of negative forces that are then allowed to come into this plane of existence and harvest the surrendered life force that we're putting out there. Because every time you're asking a question, you're surrendering or abnegating mm -hmm. your inner knowing. So you mean, what you mean by that is some, some other energy or something can, can take that collective and steer that collective in, into... Yes, of know. course, of course. Mm -hmm. And refer yeah. to it as what it is, an extraterrestrial, yeah. Yeah. call it an alien yeah. force, which is what we deal with. Right now, we're dealing with aliens. That is what yeah. the whole dystopia of the covid is about. This yeah. is alien intervention yeah. in technicolor. Mm. Yeah, I completely I completely agree. Um, I like la last year, you know, when they, uh, one of the announcements was, you know, closing places of prayer, closing churches, closing, you know, stopping the collective of good in a spiritual sense, you know, trying yeah. to shut that down, you know, like I seen that they were sort of uh, doing that. And then you could see this darker force sort of come through and, and, uh, and, and take more power. Um, and I also see that, you know, with the mask and the suppression and stuff, but, but just to touch on what you said about going within, there's one thing I've noticed I've been doing, um, sort of like a, a breath work mentorship where you know, I've been doing like 45 minute to an hour deep breath work sessions. And, and one thing I've found within that, like I found to tap in to my inner self. And I found that like, you know, that that's all that matters, you know, that that with inside yourself is love and that with inside yourself is creation. That is God. And everything else in this is just the distraction, the illusion. And, and the main key here is, is to always focus on that inner self, you know, like to say like, that's, what's going to sort of stop us from, you know, uh, destroying ourselves to say, so, yeah. So if that, if yeah. that my, my, you know, yeah. So you understand what I mean? Sure, so, sure. yeah. Well, look, Sasha, I mean, look, that's all, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that will do. I mean, that was, um, yeah, that was a good chat. I'm, I'm glad I had the opportunity to, to just reach out and just ask those questions for myself anyway. Cause I mean, um, you know, I, I, in a, in a sense, I feel it and I understand it, but you know, sometimes you try and communicate to other people and, and find out, is that what, you know, what's really going on? Is, is this all just like a projection and a false reality to make us take that path? And is there other forces at play? So, you know, you, you've, uh, yeah, you've, you've answered. No, and, and, and you're right. You're I think you're, you're right to, to interpret reality as that, but I'll tell you, um, I can only extend to you the, whatever wisdom flame I've learned firsthand and and honestly what i've been banging on for the last few years about i increasingly know is so accurate mm. that that pure truth and right action in the living now is the path of least resistance to the highest outcome and mm. I, I reduced it to one sentence because it is that simple it's the same it's it's the same kind of simplicity that that reminds us that despite the fact that there are 10 million uh, statutes and so-called laws on the statute books in North America, the most advanced country on the face of the earth purportedly, despite the fact that there are 10 million 
statutes and laws defining how humanity must conduct themselves under penalty of death, despite the fact that actually you could burn all of those laws and simply teach our children the basis of natural law, which is mm. that they can move freely upon the surface of the earth mm. um, and cause, but provided they cause uh, unmolested, provided they cause no harm, loss or injury to another living soul or commit any fraud in their transaction. So in one sentence, you've negated 10 million bullshit um, statutes, ordinances, regulations, provisions dressed up as law. But that, and that shows, illustrates how dysfunctional our reality framework is. So again, pure truth, right action in the now is the path of least resistance to the highest outcome. So if we want to stop being stupid as a species, and if we want the best for ourselves and for our loved ones and for humanity at large and for the planet, then surely we should stick with pure truth and right action. And yes, it may hurt from time to time because standing in pure truth, surely in a time like this, Mm -hmm. hurts because you're going to deal with a lot of bullies a lot of harassment a lot of a lot of opportunities to move against your own conscience are going to present themselves to you but you mm -hmm. must never ever move against your conscience and if you can hold that course if any of us can hold that course the highest outcome is assured yeah okay well um yeah, like, I mean, that, that, that makes sense with, you know, all these hurdles that we're faced with lockdowns and stuff like that. I know every time I'm enforced with a lockdown, it always, you Let's know, rattle. yeah. Can, can we look at that for a yeah, moment? Yeah, of course, of course. So this is the thing. This is the thing. One ought not to ever permit oneself to be locked down. So I know that the words are easy. Mm -hmm. I know that. I get that. But I also know that pure truth is pure truth and one ought never to permit oneself to be locked away or locked up unlawfully it moves against conscience it moves against god's grace it moves against reason it moves against everything that is worthy and righteous and judicious therefore all australians in sydney in melbourne wherever who are moving with the tide going along with these insane satanic <clears throat> statutes are the ones who are manifesting the worst outcome. That's a fact that's mathematically proven because last year promised that it would get better. It didn't, it's going to get worse. Yeah. And, and every time we continue to comply with their insane statutes, it gives them more power to move even harder against mm -hmm. the neck. Trust me, they want you dead. Okay. So they want, your baby. They don't want you to have babies. They want you sterilized. They want to be able to endogenously change the shape and the geometry of atoms in your DNA. And they want to be able to vicariously live through humanity. These are satanic, I'll say it again for the 15th time, satanic and Luciferian alien intelligences operating through their 3D temporal proxies in governments, in the bureaucracies, in the global machinery, and through the agencies like the public health administration sector, the police, the military, and so on, their enforcement arm. These are dark deviant satanic fantasists they are the parasite and they are moving against humankind so what do you do when a man lurches toward your babies with a lethal injection as i said to prime minister yesterday on an interview he said how do you deal with it i said you pull out a gun and you shoot them in the fucking face what else and he got very upset momentarily and immediately threw in a public disclaimer and said, we don't advocate violence. And I said, no, I do. You don't. I do. I'm advocating violence if it's to protect and defend women and children and even myself, if I feel so inclined. Actually, if it was just defending myself, I'll be honest with you. I don't think, Jonathan, that I would shoot someone 
in the face to protect myself. I don't think I would. I genuinely don't. Because I've, I've run uh, simulations in my mind over many, many decades. And I grew up in a war under threat of being shot on a daily basis for about 16 years, living in fear of that and hearing the gunfire and living behind grenade screens. So I've not only run the simulations, I've lived in that in the war in Africa that I grew up in. So the point I'm making is that I don't think I would shoot anyone in the face to protect myself because I don't cling on to life that hard. I know that I, I'm quite, I'm quite sort of ephemeral in my attitude toward being alive in this 3D world. I'm mm. the kind of person, if I get a, I would just let go quite easily. Mm. But, if, but if I was protecting my mum or- I understand or, what you're saying, yeah. My, yeah. Yeah, I would, yeah. without compunction, pull a trigger. Yeah. And yeah. what I'm suggesting is that, is it not that time? Have we not arrived at that time mm. where the Gestapo, where the stormtroopers <clears throat> have breached the picket fence and they've now picked our fucking door in. Mm. Is it not time now to seriously pick up pots and pans and sticks and stones and sharp pointy things and start to defend ourselves against an insane government that is trying to now poison, endogenously destroy mm. our DNA? You're mm. damn right I'm right. Mm. And everyone with a pulse, everyone connected to their divine pulse knows I'm right. Mm. This is the time <clears throat> to get seriously, seriously animated and to yeah. move against these insane dictates. So mm. what should you be doing in Sydney? You should be doing two, two words, civil disobedience. You should only be mustering amongst one another as far as I'm concerned. And everyone should be ignoring all these dictates from your satanic government. And yeah. everyone should be frog marching down to the local town town hall or to the local municipal building, kicking doors in as far as I'm concerned. Yes, mm. that's called revolution. It's not called treason, baby. Don't try that statutory bullshit on me. Treason is what those sons of bitches are doing to the good yeah. people of the yeah. world. Right? Yeah. That's the treason. Yeah. And in a, in a situation like this, you have to man up, stand up, walk out the front door, civilly disobey. Never use violence unless you're protecting and defending the weak and the infirm and the innocent against a threat of death. But the point I'm making is now is the time for consciousness in action, not just platitudes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as of last night, um, 11 o'clock last night, 12 o'clock last night, they've, they've increased sort of the restrictions and they've, they've limited a lot of work, <clears throat> um, literally sort of shut down the whole sort of construction sector. Um, and, uh, yeah, as soon as that announcement was made last night, a lot of people went out to sort of protest against that. And, uh, I was sort of thinking within myself, you know, like, what, what do I do? Do I, cause the, the, we've, we've been under this sort of lockdown to say for the last couple of weeks and I've done my own thing. So I didn't want to be a part of the circus. You know, I didn't want to go out there and deal with it. Like, cause I, I understand the whole, you know, they're, they're, they're putting it all out in the TV to go and get tests and, and do all these things and everybody's getting the tests. And the next minute they go, Oh, well, we got to lock you down because we've got the cases. So I see the people, you know, choosing that reality by following the commands and the orders from, from mainstream. But, but my point is that, um, I haven't, I haven't wanted to be a part of it. So yeah, I did find myself yesterday just going, well, I'm just going to continue life as usual. I'm going to keep going to work because my work is affected a little bit, but um, I'm just going to, yeah, keep doing my thing and, and not God, be locked God down. Bless God bless you. God bless you for your attitude. And I, I, I yeah. agree with, you. I completely agree yeah. with that. I mean, but, but I'm curious to know, um, have people not yet computed that there is no, pandemic have people not computed that there are not piles of bodies in the streets <clears throat> we don't have people leaning up against lampposts coughing up blood on the pavement you know which you would expect to see yeah. uh, when, when we've destroyed the entire world economy and mm. taken the pits out of seven billion people with yeah. a quadrillion dollar a mm. fleece uh, exercise and deception exercise you would think uh, any one of us would be able to look out our windows. I was on the phone to India this morning, mm. Africa yesterday. I speak mm. to five continents in the course of a week, every mm. week. And yeah. I've not heard one single report from one of the thousands of people that I speak to constantly mm. of people lurching around the streets, uh, yeah. turning through or falling over. So um, don't you think it's time for people to start to cogitate what they actually see with their own mm. eyes, not mm. what they're told by CNN, but what mm. they see with 
Yeah. Well, there, you know, I found that a lot of people are just reminded of the word because it's like, you know, what do we call this, this time that we're in? I just want to make my point. That aspect of humanity must mm. die, apparently, and are choosing to die. That's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. And yeah. I'm quite prepared to say goodbye to that element of humanity. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's that's true, and this is where we're we're steering at that point of of choice. You know, some are going to choose that path, some are going to choose this path, and and that's that's what what we're faced. And I think that that's what we're faced as well to this transition into a new earth and transition into this you know this this higher state of consciousness to what we're uh, sort of all shifting into. So, so yeah, so it all makes sense. So. So cool. Well, look, Sasha, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for that. Um, it's, uh, I'm sorry for all the confusion yesterday with the, uh, trying to get the link over and I understand, you know, the time difference and you're completely busy. So I do appreciate your time. Um, I have, uh, been wanting to speak to you for about eight months, uh, but it's been hard trying to get in contact. So I'm, I'm glad I had the opportunity because I, I think, you know, in, everybody that makes sense of all this to me, you're, you're the only person that I've heard speak that, that puts it all into the real picture that it needs to be in. So uh, I do thank you a thank lot you, for your thank time. You, thank you. Thank you for the kindness, Jonathan. I appreciate it. And I, my sympathies uh, lie very much with you and your family and friends yeah. in Sydney, in Australia. I just, I just pray uh, to the living God that, um, that the collective flame in Australians will reach a, will reach mm. a threshold uh, of fury of absolute mm. righteous fury and that mm. you move against uh, that insane um government yeah, yeah insane government. yeah it's crazy and a lot of people are actually seeing through the bullshit there's a lot of telegram groups and there's a lot of you know the words being spread so a lot more people are waking up which is good so hopefully you know we can um we can get out of this one and, and wait for the next attack and, and, and be prepared. So, you know, 